Last week's episode of debunking the Flat Earth documentary Scamtartica ended very badly for them. They essentially debunked themselves in a pretty impressive manner. The link for last week's episode is in the description. But that's not the end of it. There's still more documentary to debunk. So let's get on with it. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, let's press on then with this episode of Debunking Scamtartica. If you have yet to see the previous five episodes, I've linked them all in the description. You can check those out whenever you want. After last week's episode, the documentary went on to explain solar noon a little bit more and why there's a difference between solar noon and local noon. Solar noon, as we know, is when the sun is at its highest point in the sky for any given location. Local noon differs to that because of time zones and daylight saving. Right, let's press on, shall we? So here's another huge problem. And for those who want to shut up about Vapegate and actually do something useful by checking other apps and sites and expound on my legwork here, you need to look at solar noons. Even though timeanddate.com and dateandtime.info can't even agree on what date the alleged 24-hour sun starts or ends, or how many days of the alleged 24-hour sun each has at any of these bases, when you check the first day before or the first day after they both agree there even is no 24-hour sun, both almost always have the exact same solar noon. So after being highly suspect when it came to the differences in the two sites between the 24-hour day lengths, you then admit that these same two sites almost always agree when it comes to solar noon. If these websites are constantly showing the same solar noon times, that's a sign that their underlying models of Earth's rotation are correct and consistent. We've already looked at why these different websites could have different times regarding the day length around the 24-hour sun, how they define sunrise and sunset, for example precision rounding, or possibly small differences in coordinates or elevation profiles. But solar noon is calculated from astronomical mechanics. It's a pure geometric event. It happens when the sun crosses your local meridian, an imaginary line running from true south to true north. And it happens with clockwork precision. There's no grey areas with solar noon, it just is. Which means both websites have to know exactly where each of these bases are and what clock time the sun is closest to each base to agree on that. So they have to also have the exact same sunrise and sunset times and length of days for each base. Yet they never do, not even once. Again, solar noon is a clean angular event. The sun is at its highest point in the sky when it crosses your local meridian. It's based purely on longitude and Earth's rotation. Easy to calculate, easy to agree on. But as we've already discussed, sunrise and sunsets, they're a bit more fuzzy. If anything, the agreement on solar noons across those platforms proves that the Earth is rotating steadily and predictably. The sunrise and sunset differences? That's just different ways of defining when the day begins or ends. See for yourself, marked in orange, Casey, Dumont D'Urville, Mawson, Rothera Research Station, San Martin and Davis, and Shoa, not Sayoa like the map, all have the exact same solar noons for both websites. Also, Mario Zucchelli, Concordia, and Dome Fuji, also marked in orange. Again, these are just for the first date. They both at least agreed there wasn't a 24-hour sun yet at these bases, like October 30th, 29th, 22nd, etc. Wow, when you make a point, you really like to drive it home, don't you? This documentary could have been half the length that it is. And yet, despite the exact same precise solar noon times as each other, Casey's sunrise time is off by 35 minutes from each other, sunset by 19 minutes, day length by 44 minutes, Dumont off by 26 minutes, 18 minutes, and 43 minutes, Mawson off by 15 minutes, 13 minutes, and 34 minutes. Oh my word, you're actually going to go through all of them. Let's skip past this bit, shall we? What is also interesting is that despite getting the exact same solar noon times right together 
for 10 of the bases they both had statistics for, they didn't get them right at all for six of the bases. Dumont Duraville is off by an hour and two minutes. That's a typo error on my part. Date and time should be 11.44.26 a.m., not p.m. Newmeyer 3 is off by an hour. Mizuho Cohen by 17 minutes, twice the time it takes the sun to get from Miami to Marco Island. Vostok is off by an hour. Belgrano 3 is off by eight hours. What? Another major smoking gun we'll get to shortly. And Troll Station is off by three hours. Okay, so now he's pointing out discrepancies in solar noons. What time zones were these times given in? Were they using UTC, local station time? Was daylight saving at play? Some of these Antarctic stations don't even use their actual geographic time zone. They occupy within the time zone of their home country, or in some cases, just UTC. For example, with that eight hour discrepancy at Belgrano 2 station, I'm willing to bet that he compared a UTC time at one site with a local time from another. That's not a conspiracy, it's just bad research. As we already covered, what happens in latitude stays in latitude. Troll Station is nearly on the same latitude line as Senai 4, allegedly, while Conan Station is allegedly on our inner southern latitude ring closer to the alleged South Pole. Get this in your mind. On the globe model, because of the alleged tilt of the Earth, in the months between September through March, the closer you are to the alleged South Pole or dead bottom of the alleged globe, you should be having longer date periods of alleged 24-hour sun. Then the length of days you have just before and after that period should be longer than those bases farther north or up the globe towards the equator and north of the South Pole, and the sunrise and sunset time should be earlier and later from solar noon on the same longitude since the day length should be longer. Now the narrator tells us here that between September and March, or the uh, Southern Hemisphere summer, the closer you are to the South Pole, the longer your period of 24 hour sun should be. And that's absolutely true on the globe. That's how the tilt of the Earth works. And then they say, so stations closer to the South Pole should have earlier sunrises and later sunsets than those further north on the same longitude. And this is where the wheels come off. Because sunrise and sunset aren't just affected by day length. They're also affected by how the sun moves across the sky at different latitudes. That's why the globe model uses latitude and solar declination to calculate the sun's exact path at any given time. It's not just about being further south. It's about how the angle of the Earth tilt interacts with your position. If this is not the case, which you'll see it is not, then we cannot live on a globe with an Antarctic continent. Period. Let's look at San A4, the most northern base of these three, which should have the shortest length of daylight in these months, since the closer you are to the South Pole in the winter, the longer your daylight should be, versus Conan Station, which should have the longest length of day, and Troll Station between them, which should be in the middle of the two. These bases are very close to each other. Conan Station is allegedly only 236 miles south of San A4, and just 210 miles south of Troll Station. Troll Station is only allegedly 119 miles east of San A4, and just a meager 26 miles south of latitude from San A4, making them almost identical in latitude. And what happens in latitude, Jaron, stays in latitude. Okay, so San A4 station is on 71.67 degrees south. Troll station, 72.01 degrees south. And Conan station is pretty much bang on 75 degrees south. Very happy with that. Let's see what happens next. The first ridiculous thing to notice is that despite Troll station being only 26 miles south of San A4 in latitude, Dateandtime.info says Troll Station somehow has two more days of 24-hour sun, ending February 2nd, 
than Sanai 4, just 26 miles north, ending two days earlier on January 31st. Yes, and when you're that far south, 26 miles can make a lot of difference. But crucially, and I bet you didn't look this up, these bases are on wildly different elevations. Sanai 4 is at 797 meters above sea level, and Troll Station, 1,349 meters above sea level. That is why there's a difference here. So here's how we know they are lying. When we go back to Tuesday, October 29th, the last date that dateandtime.info agrees all three bases did not have a 24-hour sun, the length of days almost looks fine. Sanai 4, the most northerly away from the alleged South Pole, should have the shortest length of day, and it does. 19 hours, 4 minutes, and 35 seconds. Troll Station, just 26 miles south, should have a slightly longer day than Sanay 4, and it does. 19 hours, 16 minutes, and 23 seconds, about 12 minutes longer. And Conan Station should have the longest day, and it does. 22 hours, 45 minutes, and 5 seconds. Well, what's the problem then? It matches. But hang on. Conan Base is allegedly only 210 measly miles south of Troll Station, and it is having a three and a half hour longer daylight on October 29th than Troll Station? Sure, Steve, you obviously don't get globe physics. Well, I don't want to say it, but if the shoe fits. Okay, but then explain this. Troll Station is allegedly on the 72nd South Latitude Ring, just 119 miles east of San A4, on nearly the exact same latitude ring, just 26 miles south of San A4, meaning the sun should be moving 321.5 miles per hour between them, or reaching Troll Station 22.24 minutes before it reaches San A4 on October 29th for sunrise, and it should be setting 22.24 minutes before San A4 for sunset. The next thing you're about to say is now irrelevant, because you are yet again using Earth's linear speed relative to its access to explain sun movement. Totally incorrect. On a rotating globe, everything rotates at the same angular speed, 15 degrees per hour. I'm sure I've said that in every past episode of this documentary debunking. It's not about how fast your location spins in miles per hour. So how the hell is Troll Station getting an alleged 10.55 p.m. sunrise compared to San A4's 5.22 a.m. sunrise? Five and a half hours later, when it should be only 22 minutes later? And how in the hell is Troll Station getting its sunset that day at 6.11 p.m. when San A4 is getting its sunset at 12.27 a.m. the next morning? getting six hours and 16 minutes more evening sun time than Troll Station, when it should be setting 22 minutes later than Troll, not six hours after. Remember, though, that there's a 552 meter difference in elevation between these two stations. And at latitudes above 70 degrees south, that's a big deal. Why? Because in late October, the sun is hugging the horizon, rising and setting at incredibly shallow angles, which means the higher you are, the further you can see to the horizon. This means the sun becomes visible sooner at sunrise and later at sunset. In short, elevation extends daylight, and the effect is amplified the closer you get to the poles. An alleged Earth rotating at 321.5 miles per hour at their alleged 72 south latitude would put the sunset distance 3,822 miles west of both bases over that 6 hours and 15 minutes different, not the 119 miles between them required for the globe model to be non-fiction. And in fact, since both bases are allegedly only 119 miles apart, taking 22 minutes for the sun to travel between them, how is Troll Station getting a solar noontime of 8.33 a.m. on October 29th and San A4 getting their solar noon at 2.54 p.m., 6 hours and 21 minutes later instead of 22 minutes later, when they are on nearly the exact same latitude line by only 26 miles difference? 
impossible on a globe. This seems like a massive gotcha for the team, but let me explain what's going on. Troll Station at that time of year uses the time zone UTC. At the same time of year, SANE4 uses UTC plus two. Now, if we use the NOAA website, uh, the solar noon on October the 29th last year is 11.33 a.m. For SANE4, the solar noon on the same day is 1.54 p.m. A two hour, 21 minute difference. Two hours due to the time zone difference and 21 minutes due to the longitudinal difference. And that longitudinal difference is just over five degrees, which if you take the rotation of Earth into account should be 21 minutes. I do not know what dateandtime.info was saying, but I know which website I trust more. The Earth would have had to almost stop that day and kill everyone on it with 1,000 mile an hour tsunamis, or they are lying about these base locations and times because they are really scattered along an ice wall and not where and when they claim they are located on their fake globe model. And I think that's a very good place to wrap up proceedings for today, don't you? I don't think they're ever going to get over the linear speed at the Earth's surface thing, are they? Well, there we go. Part six all wrapped up. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Hitting the thumbs up button too would be very much appreciated. And if you really liked it, sharing this video would be great as well. As I said, the previous five episodes are linked in the description. Go and check them out if you haven't seen them yet. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow for five things that prove the Earth is not flat using common sense only. See you then.